Truman Doctrine and Martial Aid President Truman believed in the domino theory and so wanted a policy of containment to stop communism spreading. To do this, he announced that the USA would help out any country in the world where there was a threat of communism. This was the exact opposite of isolationism. The domino theory said that once one country falls to communism, its neighbours will soon follow and eventually communism will reach America. This was the fear. Therefore, the Marshall Plan was introduced. America thought that the countries of Europe would be more likely to fall to communism if the people were poor and fed up, and so they gave these countries huge loans to help them rebuild after the war. This was known as the Marshall Plan, or European Recovery Plan. Even communist countries were offered the money, but the USSR told them to say no. In return, the Soviet Union would offer them the policy of common form, money and support which would ensure that their governments would remain communist and would always have the support of the Soviet Union. The Berlin Airlift and Blockade The hostility between East and West almost turns into conflict over Berlin in 1948. The USSR refused to allow the other powers into its zone of Germany. It stripped Eastern Germany of its industry and it stopped sending food to Western Germany where millions were starving. The USA and Britain attempted to rebuild the economy in their zones, where local politicians were allowed more powers. The French zone joined the other western zones and a new currency was planned. Each side complained that the other was breaking the agreements made at Yalta and Potsdam. In July of 1948, Stalin ordered that the roads and rail links between Berlin and the western zones of Germany should be blocked and that all supplies should be cut off. Stalin hoped that this would force the Western Allies to abandon Berlin altogether. In order to beat the blockades, the RAF and US Air Force were ordered to fly supplies into Berlin using the three air corridors. In 318 days, they made 27,000 trips, carrying enough food to keep the Berliners alive. Stalin attended the Berlin siege in May 1949. Soviet planes came close to shooting at the Allied transport planes, but Stalin was unwilling to provoke a war. Why did Stalin block blockade Berlin? Well, he feared that the Western powers were rebuilding Germany as an ally against the Soviet Union. As Berlin was in the middle of the Soviet zone, he saw the Western sectors as a centre for Western propaganda and espionage. He expected the Western powers to make a humiliating retreat. But the USA and the UK made the airlift because Truman saw Berlin as the first domino. If it fell, then communism would spread westwards. He wanted to prove that he was strong enough to stand up to Stalin. He did not want to use force or threats in case this began a major war. The consequences of the Berlin airlift showed that the Western powers remained in Berlin, but this did not end Soviet pressure on the city. Germany was divided into two separate states, East Germany and West Germany and Europe was now divided into two hostile military alliances. Churchill made a speech and called this the Iron Curtain and said that throughout the middle of Europe an Iron Curtain descended separating Western democracies from Communist Eastern Europe. The Korean War In June 1950 Communist North Korea invaded non-Communist South Korea. They were backed up by the Soviet Union and so the USA sent troops to help the South Koreans. The country was originally separated by the line of the 38th parallel. Once this line was overstepped, the Americans were concerned about the domino theory, that if South Korea went communist, then other countries could follow suit. Officially, the war became a United Nations operation, but the majority of soldiers and equipment were American. The North Koreans were pushed back, but then the Chinese joined the war on their side because US forces got too close to their territory. The Americans had a decision to make. They had to decide whether to continue throughout North Korea and start to invade communist China and push communism back further. However, the war eventually ended in a stalemate in July 1953, back at the 38th parallel. 50,000 American soldiers had been killed and nothing had really changed. However, consequences emerged that relations between China and America were very poor until the 1970s as a result of American interference in Korea. Berlin blockade caused further problems. The joint control of Germany ended in 1949. The three western zones became the Federal Republic of Germany, an anti-communist state firmly allied to the west. The Soviet zone became the German Democratic Republic, a one-party communist state under Soviet control.
In 1949, the Western Allies decided to set up the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, a defensive alliance against the Soviet Union. In response, the Soviet Union set up the Warsaw Pact, calling NATO an aggressive alliance. The pact was a counter move to the admission of West Germany to NATO, and its members were to support each other if attacked. In 1953, Stalin died, and Khrushchev becomes president. He condemned Stalin for his persecution and his dictatorial rule, and came up with the idea of peaceful coexistence. Khrushchev changed communist doctrine by arguing that there was no need to be at war with the Western powers, that the communist system would eventually triumph over the capitalist system because it was superior. Meanwhile, the two systems could exist peacefully side by side, and the Soviet Union would continue to compete with the USA. However, the Berlin Wall was built in 1961 as a result of the fact that East Berlin was not prosperous and West Berlin was. The cinemas and shops that were attracting East Berlin visitors, the Soviet Union saw this as a capitalist infection in the heart of Eastern Germany. Western Berlin provided an easy escape route from East to West Germany for some 250,000 refugees each year, and Khrushchev felt that this needed to be stopped. The Soviet aimed to maintain control over East Germany, and to make the Western powers recognise it as an independent state. Khrushchev demanded in 1958 that the three Western occupying powers recognise the German Democratic Republic, that it withdraw its troops from West Berlin and hand their access routes over to East Germany. He said that unless they did this within six months, he would sign a separate peace treaty with the, the East Germany and hand East Berlin over to it. The Western powers refused and Khrushchev backed down. However, Berlin became physically divided in 1961 by a barbed wire barrier with put, being put up against Berlin, and this followed by a wall of concrete blocks. It meant that free access from east to west was ended and many families were split. Refugees from east to west flow almost ceased, and Kennedy, the American president at the time, accepted the Soviet action, although it broke the four powers agreement of Berlin. Kennedy refused proposals for the US troops to tear down the wall, fearing that this was likely to provoke armed conflict. He had to accept that this made him look weak. But Khrushchev lost face by failing to remove the Western powers from Berlin. He believed that Kennedy's response showed that he was weak. East-West relation tensions increased. Both sides started to test most pa more powerful nuclear weapons. The Cuban Missile Crisis America and Cuba were on good terms until the communist Fidel Castro took over in 1961. The United States did not want a communist country so close and so helped rebels to invade Cuba at the Bay of Pigs in April 1961. The invasion was a disaster and the following year Soviet missiles were spotted on Cuba. Khrushchev refused to remove the missiles so Kennedy ordered the Navy to blockade Cuba and to stop any supplies from going on in or out. After a very tense week, Khrushchev eventually backed down on the 28th of October 1962. No one is quite certain why Khrushchev sent missiles to Cuba. He ran a high risk that the, that the USA would discover the missiles, but probably he hoped that they would be in place before this happened. He calculated that Kennedy would make a weak response, and possible motives included defending Cuba following the Bay of Pigs operation, bargaining for the removal of the US missiles that were in Turkey, and bargaining for Western powers to leave Berlin. He wanted to catch up with the USA in arms races by placing missiles where they could hit their targets more accurately. He hoped to score points off Kennedy by placing missiles on the USA's doorstep. The Cuban Missile Crisis saw 12 days of high tension right the way throughout the world, where people were genuinely concerned to find out what it is that the USA and USSR would actually do to each other. In the end, however, Khrushchev was forced to back down. The victory for America meant that JFK was very popular. Khrushchev was praised abroad for his common sense, but was criticised at home and by the Chinese for being weak. Both sides realised how dangerous the situation had become. Khrushchev claimed he had achieved his plan of preventing an American invasion of Cuba. He was attacked by China for backing down in the face of the American threat, and he lost face at home because of his misjudgment. The episode probably contributed to his downfall two years later. Kennedy, however, increased his reputation at home and worldwide by managing to avoid a war and forcing Khrushchev to back down.
Realising how close to war they had come and the difficulty of communica communicating quickly in a crisis, Kennedy and Khrushchev agreed to set up a hotline between the Kremlin and the White House. Both leaders attempted to improve relations with the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1963. Although the Soviet Union had been forced to remove its missiles, it continued to try to influence countries in the Caribbean and South America. Cuba remains a communist country dependent on the Soviet aid and protection. Kennedy, however, agreed that in order to remove the missiles from Cuba, that he would remove the American missiles in Turkey. However, Kennedy's reputation did suffer because the American people did never did know that, Turkish, that Turkey had missiles and that they had been removed. Why did America go to war in Vietnam? The USA went to war in Vietnam to protect non-communist South Vietnam from the Soviet-supported communist North. This was in accordance with the domino theory and the US policy of containment. Eisenhower and Kennedy first sent advisers to help the South. Then in 1965, President Johnson sent in a fighting force. The war continued until 1973 when Nixon agreed to a ceasefire. All American soldiers left. By 1976, the whole of Vietnam was communist and its neighbours Cambodia and Laos soon followed. Why did the Americans lose the Vietnam War? The Viet Cong were an ultimate fighting force that were on the side of the Soviet Union and China in order to prevent Vietnam from losing communism. It had help from the Soviet Union and China and as a result had better weapons. The Viet Cong knew the lands better and were used to the climate, whereas the American soldiers were not. The US soldiers were trained for urban warfare, to use conventional weapons, but the Viet Cong used guerrilla tactics like booby trapping. They had a series of tunnels and the Americans could never really decipher between who was the enemy forces and general members of the Vietnam public. As many of the Vietnam soldiers, the Viet Cong did not wear uniforms. The Americans also managed to lose the war in Vietnam because some of the incidents like the My Lai and the Napalm attacks made by the United States were very unpopular. The Vietnam War was the first media war and images of what the Americans were doing were sent out all over the world. And as a result, when people saw skin being burnt off children's bodies because of the napalm attacks, it meant that many people were very concerned at why the Americans were actually in Vietnam and believed this was becoming more than about just about containing communism. But in Vietnam, the Americans managed to test a massive amount of nuclear and chemical and biological weapons. This resulted in the Vietnam War being particularly unpopular with young people. It was the young men who would have to go and fight in Vietnam. The hippie culture of the 1960s culture rejected war as a way of solving disputes. Horrific realities of this war were seen on TV and on newspapers. Images of the My Lai massacre in particular were very hurtful to the American government. Incidents like the Kent State University shootings turned people against the government when, so, when American troops began to shoot those people that were protesting. They were also seen as a rebellion against the older generation. The influence of celebrities like Bob Dylan, Muhammad Ali and Jane Fonda, who all spoke out against this war, meant that the American government became particularly impossible even with its own people. The defeat in Vietnam was a big shock for the American people and shook their confidence a lot. After Vietnam, American governments were far less willing to send American soldiers to fight abroad because they knew it would be unpopular with the voters. Instead, they now tried to improve relations with the Soviet Union.